Hello everyone, welcome to another D-Hard House tutorial. This one is for the countryside baby blanket. Take a look at it here in all of its glory, fresh off the needles, beautiful stripes and colors, a little bit of texture. I promise the pattern is super simple. <laughs> Uh, this is, I guess you could consider this the second video in a short series. <laughs> right now it's, it's short because there's only two. Uh, but if you haven't already checked out my tutorial for how to knit my favorite baby blanket, uh, I'll put a link in the video here. It's also a corner to corner blanket, uh, worked fully in garter stitch a real um, beginner friendly tutorial. So if this is your first time knitting a baby blanket, I mean, honestly, countryside will be great, but so is my favorite baby blanket pattern. So this pattern is available on Ravelry for purchase, and I'll put a link down below in the description box uh, so you can snag a copy for yourself. Uh, and this video goes along with that pattern. So follow along with me uh, in the written instructions as I show you how to do this uh, as if I was sitting right next to you. All right, so let's get into it. We'll start from the beginning and work corner to corner. So this blanket pattern is another corner to corner blanket pattern. So we're knitting from one corner to the other and we're going to use two colors of yarn. So here I'm going to be using two self-striping uh, cakes of yarn, but you can use two solid colors, you could use scraps from your stash, um, but know that the pattern is written for having uh, two strands of yarn. Um, because we're knitting this corner to corner, which means half the blanket is going to be worked with increases, and the other half decreases, assuming the two halves are equal, <laughs> uh, we should be using half of the yarn for the increase section and the other half for the decrease section. So before you get started casting on, I highly recommend that you weigh your yarn. If you're using, um, you know, I want to use this yarn <laughs> and nothing else, um, I highly recommend that you weigh your yarn first so that you have an idea of when you're going to get to the halfway mark. So I'm using two cakes of Lion Brand Mandala, um, some self-striping yarn here, and I weighed each of these skeins. So this one is 150 grams, uh, which matches the label, and this one is 156 grams. So I know I'm going to use the smaller of the two, <laughs> Um, that I can weigh this ball of yarn as I'm working on my blanket. And when I get close to, what's half of 150? 75. So when I get close to 75 grams, I know that it's getting close to the middle of the blanket because I don't want to run out of yarn. So uh, just something to keep in mind. But if you're open to the idea of introducing um, different strands of yarn at the end and you're achieving a particular size, then... Um, then you can do that. So other than um, making sure you have enough yarn for the project, uh, I also recommend uh, having some kind of measuring tool. I, I like to use a tape measure with inches, uh, but it's nice to be able to measure how wide the blanket is. Um, typically you want your blanket to have certain dimensions for whatever purpose it may be serving. So, um, so having a measuring tool handy for this project will be helpful. Other than that, you pretty much just need um, your uh, knitting needles and uh, scissors because we will have to cut the yarn at some point. So let's go ahead and get into the cast on and the setup of the blanket. So I'm going to show you the cast on. I like to use a long tail cast on method. It's my preferred cast on for a number of reasons, uh, but the main one is that it creates a really nice cast on edge. 
And because we're only casting on four stitches, it's not like that's super noticeable. Uh, so feel free to use whatever cast on method you like best. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Twisted German cast on, which is my favorite of the long tail cast on methods. Um, and I've shown this in a few of my videos, but uh, basically for a long tail cast on, you need a long tail. We're only casting on four stitches, so it doesn't need to be very long. Uh, but you do want to have an end to weave in. So I just give it a bit of length. And we're going to hold the working yarn, which is attached to the ball, and the tail. We're going to hold them uh, with our three fingers down here, but draped over our thumb and forefinger. Notice I'm holding the yarn down here with my a pointer finger on my other hand. So we're going to move this needle around here. So you need to be holding this strand. So what we're going to do is go under the two strands that go around the thumb. So I'm going underneath both of them. But I'm going to catch this inside loop, pull it underneath that strand. And I'm going to go over to the pointer finger and catch this strand it through this little triangle there. I'm going to release those yarns around my thumb and forefinger and just tighten this up. I'm not going to tighten it up too much. I'm going to keep it kind of loose because I want to be able to put the other end of the knitting needle in there to make the first few stitches. So snug but not tight. So let's do that again. So under both strands of the thumb to catch the inside loop. Over to the pointer finger, catch the inside loop. See that triangle to pull it through? There. We're just going to do this one more time. Because that's all we're casting on are four stitches. <laughs> Which is why I love corner to corner blankets cast on is so short. Cool. Um, so one thing to note when you're using the long tail cast on, this counts as your first row. So that is one row worked, basically all in knit stitches. If you're using a different cast on method, then you'll want to work across one row in knit stitches. So we're striping this blanket. So I'm going to go back across in the same color and I'm going to use, there we go, get my yarn set up. So uh, we're going to knit two, yarn over, knit two. So now I'm going to bring in my second color. So we're setting up the blanket here. Second color. So I'm going to knit two. That stitch is really loose because that end, I'll tighten that up in a minute. Knit two, yarn over, knit to the end. And then I'm gonna turn my work and do the same thing. Oops. So knit two, yarn over, knit to the end. So that's all I'm going to do for the garter sections. Um, in the increase is I'm going to work 
two of these rows in one color, two of these rows in another color. And each row is worked the same way. So we're just increasing one stitch on each row. So in the garter section, we're working two rows in each color, which creates a nice stripe in garter stitch. But in the ribbing section, we're going to do each color in one row. So uh, what we're going to do is work across in color A, slide the stitches back, work them in color B, turn our work, color A, slide the stitches back, color B, turn our work. Okay. So we're go still going to get striping in the ribbing section, and it'll be slightly different striping than in the garter section because it'll be every one row instead of every two but it, it creates that nice um, visual in the pattern so the ribbing section is going to look like this so i'm going to start in color a we always start with color a in each of the sections so i'm going to knit two yarn over so this is our border edging is always this um, this garter stitch around the edge and then my yarn over is going to be my increase for the row so knit two yarn over and then I'm going to uh, work in one by one rib so knit one purl one knit one purl one knit one purl one until you get to the last three stitches and then we'll knit these three so we're knitting the yarn over from the previous round and then those two border stitches. Okay, now I'm going to slide the stitches back on the needle. So I'm not turning, I'm sliding them back. So still with the right side facing, now I'm going to work across in color B. So we want the border here to be garter stitch but in color A I knit these two stitches so this time we're going to purl them so there we go. I'm going to purl these first two stitches okay and I'm not going to yarn over I'm going to yarn over over here because this previous row in color A got a yarn over on this side already. So we need a yarn over over here this time. So uh, we're going to purl these first two and then purl the yarn over. And then uh, we'll just continue in the ribbing. So this was a knit stitch before I'm going to knit it again. So knit, knit, Sometimes I find I have to tighten up that last stitch of the previous round. It gets all loosey-goosey. Uh, and then, on these last three stitches, I'm going to knit one, yarn over, and purl two. Oh. Now I can turn my work. So now I have both working yarns at this side. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So I finished this row in color B, so now I'm going back to color A. So, but now we've turned our work. So over here on the right side, we purled these stitches. So on the back side, they look like knit stitches. So we are gonna purl them. So we can keep that beautiful stitch pattern. Sorry, a little yarn management here. Okay. So I'm going to purl <clears throat> those first two stitches on the edge there. And then this is the yarn over from the previous row. 
Uh, so I'm going to uh, purl that as well. So okay. now I'm going to continue in the ribbing. So this looks like a pearl knit pearl. Knit. So that's what I'm going to do is just continue in the ribbing pattern. So pearl knit pearl knit pearl <clears throat> knit pearl. Okay, uh, and then. I'm going to get to these last three stitches. I'm going to knit, yarn over, and purl two. And then I'm going to slide the stitches back on the needle. And all we need to do is bring color B over. So I'm on the wrong side, but now I'm on an even row anyway just follow the pattern right so I'm going to knit these two stitches yarn over remember on the previous row we yarn over over here and every row it should be switching which side we're increasing on that's what's going to keep this opening up evenly into a square so yarn over on this side and then knit, purl, knit, purl. See, we're knitting the knits and purling the purls, so we want to maintain that ribbing. We don't want a, uh, a seed stitch going on here. I'm gonna tighten up that last stitch there. And then uh, the last three stitches here we're going to knit. We're going to knit the yarn over and knit the two edge stitches. And then if I turn my work at the end of that, I finish the ribbing section. So we get our ribbing and we have the colors striped every row. In garter stitch, the colors are striped every two rows. So, uh, so yeah, that's the ribbing section. So I just knit a little bit more so you could see that you're just going to keep alternating between the garter and the ribbing sections. Garter, ribbing, garter, ribbing. And it's just going to keep increasing out. So the rows will look a little different on the decrease side, but for now, we're just going to grow this blanket, increasing one stitch on each row um, until this is either the desired width that you want. So remember, this is knitting from this corner to the other corner. So this is an edge of your blanket, and so is this. If it's really gonna, going to be a square, this length should be the same as this. Uh, but make sure it either gets out to the size that you want, or if you weighed your yarn, right, and I know this is the smaller of my two skeins, is when I, th I think I'm getting close to the middle, I'm going to throw this skein on the scale. And I'm going to make sure that I have at least 75 grams left to do the second half, because 75 for me is half. Um, so either way, whether you're doing it by measurement, or making sure you have enough yarn um, that's going to help you judge where to switch over to the decrease section all right so i have finished the increases for my blanket so i've reached the halfway point on both of my skeins of yarn it's time for me to begin the turning section so uh, it's important that you end on a ribbing section because we're going to do the turning section in garter. So I've given myself a little bit extra wiggle room here on my um, on my yarn here. So I have a little bit more than half because that's I've got a, a few more increases to do and then we're going to start decreasing. So, we're going to work this in 
garter. So what I'm going to do, so the garter section has eight rows, right? We do two rows in color A, two rows in color B, two rows in color A, two rows in color B, okay? So the first four rows are going to be increases and the last four rows will be decreases. So the beginning of the turning section works exactly the same as the beginning of the garter section we've been working here in the increases. So I'm going to work with color A and I'm going to do the usual knit one, sorry, knit two, <laughs> uh, yarn over and knit across, right? So I'm going to do this twice in color A, so down this way and back, and then twice in color B, down this way and back. So I'm still working the same increases as I have been doing. And then, um, and then we'll work the decrease version for the last four rows. So I'm just knitting to the end of the row. And then I will turn this big blanket. <laughs> I'll turn my work and I'll just work the same increase pattern row. So knit two, yarn over, and just knit to the end of the row. Back across in color A. Okay, so I knit to the end. I'm going to turn my work. So I'm now going to use color B and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So I will knit two, yarn over, and knit to the end. Just knit every stitch down to the end of the row. Okay, knit to the end, so I'll turn my work. And I'll do the same thing back. So this will be the last time we do an increase on this blanket. So knit two, yarn over, and knit to the end. Okay, we just finished the longest row on this blanket. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> all right, so that's half of the turning section. So now we'll work the second half, which starts our decreases. So I'm going to go back to color A. And we're going to maintain these yarn over lacy bits here on the edge. So in order to compensate for that increase of one stitch, we'll decrease two stitches. That way we're coming down by one stitch each row. So what we're going to do is get the camera to focus. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is knit one knit two together, yarn over, 
knit two together and knit to the end of the row. And we'll do that same thing. So that's our decrease pattern row. We'll do that same thing this first time in color A, a second time in color A, then one time in color B, and a second time in color B. And that'll finish our turning section. Okay, so I'm going to turn my work. Now that I've made it to the end of the row, so we'll work back across in color A. So the, the pattern is the same at the decrease pattern row. So we'll knit one, uh, knit two together, yarn over, and knit two together, and then knit to the end of the row. Okay, so I'll turn my work and we'll do this again in color B. So same pattern row here with the decreases so I will knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and knit to the end. And so I'm going to go down with color B once and I'll do the same thing back and that will finish off the turning section. Okay, last row in the turning section. So we just turn our work and work this decrease pattern row again. So knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. Oops. There we go. And then knit to the end of the row. Okay, we just completed the turning section. So you should be able to see on the end a corner starting to form. So right here in color B was our last increase. Here in color A we started the decrease and there's our little corner starting to form over here so now it's just a matter of continuing switching between the garter section and the ribbing section uh, but instead of the increase patterns we're going to work the decrease patterns so uh, we'll work through that next so I went ahead and worked a bit forward <laughs> Uh, quite a ways here so that I could get down to some shorter rows here for the tutorial uh, but what I'm going to be showing you is working this pattern on the decrease side and so it's it's uh, the same as what you saw on the increase side but instead of adding stitches to the edge we're going to take them away uh, but the turning point here was in garter 
stitch. So we're gonna start with ribbing, then garter, and just keep repeating those until you get down to um, the other corner. So I'm going to start this section of the tutorial with ribbing. So I left off with garter stitch, uh, just like on that uh, transition section, or turning section. So to work the ribbing in decrease, hang on, let me do a little yarn management here. Okay, so the brown is color A and the blue is color B. And so I'm going to start with color A like we always do. And I'm going to knit the first stitch. And then knit two together. Yarn over. Now we're yarn we're doing the yarn over because just let me do a pause here real quick. Because we're keeping this eyelet going up the side. So I decreased one and now I'm increasing one so those cancel each other out. So right on the other side of the yarn over we are going to knit two together. So knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. Okay. And then we're just going to continue in the ribbing. So this counts as the first stitch of the ribbing. So that's a knit. So purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. And we're just going to do this uh, until almost the end. What is it till the last three stitches i'm just going to keep working across this row it is shorter than before but <laughs> still has quite a few stitches So here are my last three stitches, which you can see includes the yarn over from the previous row and the two stitches on the edge. So what we are going to do is just knit these three stitches. So we're always going to be knitting, um, at least from the right side here, uh, knitting this yarn over and then we create garter stitch around the border. So yeah, just knit the last three. There we go. And uh, then we slide the stitches back. So we can come back across in color B. So color B here. We are going to start with some pearls because we need to maintain this uh, garter stitch on the edge. So we will pearl uh, the first three stitches. So just like at the end of the previous row, we knit the last three. So if we're mimicking that over here, I'll purl the first three. So purl one, two, three. And uh, then we're going to do our ribbing. And instead of doing decrease, increase, decrease at the start, we're going to do that at the end. So, uh, yep. Just we're maintaining that ribbing. So knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way across. Well, almost. <laughs> we're going to complete this until the last six stitches. Six, 
Oops. Okay, so there are my six stitches on the end, so we're going to knit one and then purl two together. Oops. Yarn over and purl two together. And purl the last one. There we go. And we just uh, pretty much repeat that over here like we did before for the great swap here. So back to color A, which is my brown. Look, the brown's going to be this uh, beautiful pop of cerulean at the end it's going to be so pretty okay all right back to color a uh but we're doing uh that purling again so now we've turned our work so we will purl three at the start and uh, maintain the ribbing across until the last three stitch or sorry until the last six stitches five stitches excuse me basically what we just did we're going to do again <laughs> Last five stitches, two, four, five. So we are going to purl two together. Yarn over, purl two together. And then purl the last one. And slide the stitches back. And we'll come across in color B. This time we get to knit. So knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then ribbing across most of the row and then those last three stitches excuse me last four stitches we'll just knit Okay, so that's a decrease ribbing section. And so you're just going to alternate that in between the decrease garter sections. And this is the wrong side of the <laughs> blanket, by the way. I mean, they both look nice in my opinion, but you can see the, there we go. You can see the stripes more prominently on the right side. While the garter sections do have more rows, technically, I think they're my favorite because <laughs> it's just the one pattern row that you repeat. Super easy. So I've got color A. I'm going to start the garter section on the decrease side. So I'm going to knit one. And you guessed it, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together, and uh, knit to the end of the row. 
Yep. Knit, knit, knit. Remember, it's not ribbing, it's garter, so we're just knitting all the way. And then we turn our work and we go back across doing the exact same thing in the same color. So I'm just going to work this yarn back over to that side again. So we will knit one once I figure out what my yarn is doing. Uh, knit one. Two together, yarn over, knit two together, and knit across to the end of the row. There we go. That's it. So you just repeat that, right? We did that pattern row twice in color A right here. And then you'll do it twice in color B, twice again in color A, twice again in color B, right? So just like back here. So twice in color A, twice in color B, twice in color A, twice in color B. Um, and you just work uh, back and forth like that, turning your work. Um, yeah, so you just keep decreasing. Obviously, uh, you're decreasing one stitch uh, every row. So eventually, we'll bring this back down to uh, the other corner. Okay, that's it. I'm down to four stitches on the needle. Uh, it's going to end in a garter stitch section, which is quite nice. And you'll continue the uh, decreases and yarn overs all the way to the corner here, even on the last row. See right here, the second stitch is my yarn over. So all that continued in there. And so what I'm going to do, I've already broken the yarn for color A. We're done with color A. Uh, but color B here is the last color. So I'm just going to bind off these four stitches. And then I'll break the yarn for color B. And I'll weave in the ends. Knitwise, and then I'll cut the yarn and pull that through. And there we go. That's it. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already liked this video or subscribed to the channel, maybe you want to do that. <laughs> I will see you next time. Stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and I will see you in, I'm sure, another tutorial in the future.